Hello, today I will be quickly showing you how to add post-processing to your Unity projects. This is something that you can do in just a couple of minutes and can easily improve the look of your game. So let's get started. Of course, first you'll need a project up and running. I just have a sample scene with a player controller, but of course your project is probably completely different. So first, you'll need to open up the package manager in the top left. And if you don't see all these packages, you'll want to click up here and then Unity Registry. When you find it, you'll want to click install and then just wait while it's downloading. I already did this before I started recording, but if I didn't, I would just have to click one button. It's really simple. Then click on packages on the left and find the post processing subfolder. There you want to find the other folder called post processing. Then you want to go into the file called runtime. Inside that folder, you need to find the one called Post Processing Layer, and you want to drag it onto your main camera. Next, click on your main camera, go to Layer, and click Add Layer. Then, go to the most recent user layer and simply write Post Processing or something similar to that. Then, click again on the camera and assign it the Post Processing Layer. Scroll down in your inspector and assign this layer to the Post Processing Layer that we had just created. Then, go back into your project files and drag Post Processing Volume onto the camera. Then, click on the camera, scroll down, and make sure Is Global is checked. Next, we're going to need to make a Post Processing Profile. So, go back into your project files and go to your personal assets. Here, create a new Post Processing Profile and name it anything you would like. Then, click back on the camera and assign the camera the profile. And that's about it. To add the effects, just click on the profile and select add effect. Then you can choose from all the different effects to make your game look a little bit better. I won't go in depth on all the different effects, but Bloom is definitely really good and I also recommend Chromatic Aberration, which can make your game really stand out from the rest. But I still recommend testing them all out and seeing what fits for your particular game, because obviously every game is going to look a little bit different and will look better with particular effects. Anyway, that's it for today. If you liked this video and found it helpful, the best way to support me is definitely to subscribe. And check out my other videos, since I'm planning on having tons of other tutorials to help you on your journey on becoming a game developer. Let me know if this video actually helped you, since it's always nice to get your feedback. And that's about it. <laughs>